Welcome to a technical introduction to InTouch OMI. My name is Chris, and in the next 15 minutes, we're going to walk you through a basic introduction to OneWare's latest visualization application for human-machine interfacing, again, called InTouch OMI. Now, this is a technical introduction. It isn't meant to be a presentation on the value and the benefits of OMI and the differences between InTouch OMI and traditional HMI-type applications. We're focusing exclusively on how to build an InTouch OMI application. And to keep it brief, we're intentionally not covering all the options and reasons why you would or wouldn't want to use each option. However, once you've gone through the video, we'd be happy to help you understand the options, the capabilities, and answer those why and when should I type of questions. But for now, buckle up, because I've already burned through a, more than a minute of time, so we better get started. InTouch OMI is the first version of InTouch that only needs Wonderware's application server components installed to do everything you need. For not only the supervisory function, but also for visualizing and monitoring your processes and equipment. And of course, this means that if you don't have any experience with App Server, well, this probably isn't where you want to start. But if you have some experience with App Server and Orchestra Graphics, there are only a few new concepts to learn, and you can create InTouch OMI applications quickly and easily. So, step one. Like any other App Server based solution, we're going to want to model our process and equipment. For this quick and simple demo, this includes opening our IDE and taking a look at our relatively simple reactor object template. It has a handful of attributes like an agitator, status, its command, batch IDs, levels, temperatures, all that kind of stuff. Also note that we have a couple of graphics associated with Reactor. One is kind of an old school version with pretty graphics, and the other is a newer style version that utilizes the Wonderware Situational Awareness Library. And while we could spend our remaining time reviewing this object and the details about it and the process, this is probably enough for now. So let's move on to step two. Now we need instances of the reactor template to match what we have running in our plant. In this case, we'll say we have four reactors across two buildings. Now we could do this instantiation process manually, right mouse click, choose new, name it, drag and drop it. But to speed things up, we can just import a very simple CSV file that creates the instances for us. And this is a method that a lot of people oftentimes overlook, but it's so simple that you might want to consider giving it a try. With our instances created and in their proper areas, now we need to assign the I.O. references, you know, tell the object how to get data from the PLC. For this example, we'll use the automatic I.O. assignment capabilities introduced in App Server well, several versions ago. And we'll also verify that the communications are all working for all the data points that we'll be asking for. Now, so far, this is exactly the same as every other App Server solution you've probably ever developed, in touch OMI or not. You'd model your process and equipment, create some graphics, wire up the communications. Normally, you'd create an InTouch application next. You'd figure out what windows you need and what graphics and data needs placed on each one of those windows. Uh, you'd set up some kind of method to let the users of the application navigate to the different windows that you created and maybe add in some kind of alarming display and trending capabilities, things like that. Now, if you have multiple applications, you do that all over again for each one of those, right? This is where InTouch OMI differs significantly and where we get a jump into the new stuff. So what is this new stuff? Well, one of these new concepts is something called a screen profile. Screen profiles enable us to define the display configuration we anticipate our users utilizing when executing the application. Okay, what does that really mean? Well, Unlike traditional applications, which either utilize standard display resolutions, think back to the 800 by 600, 1024 by 768, 1280 by 1024, 1920 by 1280, or even some fixed rectangle, right? You define the width and height and it must take up that size. Well, we can do screen profiles that do the same thing, but we can also set up screen profiles that truly support multi-monitor solutions, where these monitors have varying sizes or resolutions, where some have touchscreen support and others may not, and a lot more, like the ability to support not-so-traditional screens too, such as tablets and phones. These screen profiles enable us to more accurately define the display configuration that will actually be used when the application is running, and not just one size fits all. We can create just about any configuration we want, or we can even use one of the dozens already defined within the App Server environment out of the box. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to create one from scratch, just to demonstrate how easy it really is. 
But be aware that Wonderware has already provided several of these ready to use, again, as I said a moment ago, out of the box, right? Now to create our screen profile, we simply go to the graphic toolbox, right click and select the new screen profile option. We name it and then we modify it just like we would any other app server object, right? We double click on it. Once inside the editor, we can configure several properties of the screen, like its name, its resolution. We can flop the orientation one way or the other. We can even identify if the screen supports touchscreen capabilities and if it does, if it actually can support multi-touch as well. Now for our example, we won't be using a touch screen, we'll just be using a very simple, single, high definition display. Another new component that we need to configure is called a layout. Layouts identify the content or graphics that should be shown in the different areas of the display. More likely than not, you're already familiar with the concept of layouts as most HMI application developers implement them in some kind of a manual way. For example, most HMI applications implement a dedicated area for navigation, so the user knows where to click, no matter what screen they're interacting with, to change windows or screens. They might do a dedicated area for alarm summaries or for historization, and there's always a dedicated area where the main content is shown too, things like this. Well, InTouch OMI utilizes layouts in somewhat of a similar way, but it automates what content is actually shown. In other words, you don't actually create any windows inside InTouch OMI. You simply create panels within a layout, and you tell the layout what type of content should be visualized in each panel. Each panel can be named, size, there's a ton of different options available. But for the sake of time and our simple demo, let's stick to the minimum options. Specifically, for our reactor example, we're going to want three panels. One to provide our user with the ability to navigate to the various content of our application. Some kind of a main area as well, in which we display the content specific to either the equipment or the area that they're looking at. And we'll create a fancy slide-in type of alarm panel. And configuring these is actually pretty simple and quick. For our navigation panel, we're going to want the application to automatically create links to the content our users will need to look at. Specifically, that includes details about our process and equipment. Automatic navigation is one of the powerful features automatically built into InTouch OMI, and it's simple to implement. We just click on the navigation pane and then click on the toolbox. Within the Wonderware provided content, we find a handful of applications and apps. Expanding that, we select the InTouch OMI apps and we can see a variety of options. For our application, we want to use the navigation style commonly referred to as a tree control. So, we simply drag it over and drop it in the navigation panel. It does have some configuration options we can set if we want to, like if the navigation panel should start at the root of your Galaxy model hierarchy, or if it should start in some other level or area that you define. We'll enable the showing of the root component and leave everything else just at the default for now. We're going to do something very similar for the alarm panel. Selecting it using the toolbox and the OMI application and grab the alarm control and just slide it over and drop it in that panel. It too has some properties that are specific to the function it's providing alarm enunciation, right? So we'll click on, in this case, an ellipsis to update the alarm query to show us, let's say, current alarms for our entire galaxy. Again, there are a lot of things we could configure here if we wanted to, but for this simple demo, we're going to stick with the basics. Finally, we're ready to configure the main content area. And in this case, we want the graphics that are associated with the area or the equipment the user has selected in the navigation panel to be displayed here. And in this case, we don't really need to change anything. By default, panels are set to do what's called auto fill, which means it's going to automatically fill in the appropriate content based on what the user has selected in the navigation panel. There is, however, one thing we need to do. And this is unique to our main content display. You may remember that our reactor objects had multiple graphics associated with the reactor, right? A pretty one and a situational awareness one. Well, to enable us to view all of the graphics associated with a given object, we need to enable the panel to show multiple graphics. And we accomplish this very easily by clicking on the tab icon for the panel and selecting the option for multiple. Now at this point, you may be getting a little lost. If this is the first time you've seen this, it's understandable. And admittedly, this is a pretty different way of configuring 
uh, normal HMI applications, right? Where you define windows and what content goes in that window and how users get to that window. But as I said earlier, hang in there. It's definitely worth it and we're almost there. Let's save this and recap what we've done so far. First, we created our app server components like we normally would, object templates with attributes and graphics to help us supervise and monitor our process and equipment. We created instances from those templates for each real world, and in this case, reactor that we'll be supervising and monitoring. We even verified that the IO extended attributes are successfully communicating with the controllers or PLCs. Second, we've created a screen profile to align with the configuration we'll be using when we run the InTouch application. In other words, I'm running on a computer with a single monitor, and that monitor has a resolution of 1920 by 1080, and it is not a touchscreen. Third, we created a layout that defines how the content and graphics will be organized, including how users navigate, a main content area, and kind of a cool little panel that'll slide in from the bottom to show us our alarms. What we haven't talked about is how these things relate to one another, how objects, screen profiles, and layouts are related. And this is what we do in the InTouch OMI View app, the final new component within App Server related to InTouch OMI. The View app acts like any other object in a galaxy. We take the base template and we create a derived template from it. We give it a name and double click on it to open it or configure it. In this case, the first thing we're presented with is the question of what type of screen layout we want this specific InTouch OMI application to run on. And we're going to select the single HD profile we created earlier. Next, we're asked to select the layout we want implemented on the screen profile we've selected. We'll choose the basic layout we created a moment ago and then click Finish. Now we can see all three things together. On the left, we see the what the navigation will actually look like, which mirrors our Galaxy model view. Next, we see the screen profiles and the layout that the content will be placed on. Now, finally, if we want to, we could actually customize the navigation and the content that would be shown as people interact with the very different areas and the objects and things like that. In this case, for our super simple demo, <laughs> we're gonna leave everything as it is, check it in. Okay, let's create an instance of our view app and give it a name. And finally, let's start deploying this so we can see what our efforts have given us. We access InTouch OMI applications through a new Wonderware application manager. Now, some of you may be wondering, why don't you just use the InTouch application manager to accomplish this? And the answer is, you could only run one InTouch traditional, or we call it InTouch HMI now, application at a time using the InTouch application manager. But InTouch OMI actually allows us to run multiple InTouch OMI applications simultaneously. And because of this, we needed a new application manager to provide this capability. So within the Wonderware application manager, we now see our application. We need to launch it in order to view the application. First, we can see the screen profile enables everything to fit just like we laid it out without any problems. That being said, I can also resize the application and the content will automatically adjust for the space provided. This means you don't have to run InTouch OMI maximized. And as I said a minute ago, you can run multiple InTouch OMI applications at the same time on different screens, the same screen, however you want. Second, we see our navigation tree on the left and this navigation tree mimics our Galaxy's model view. And while it is customizable, out of the box, it's an exact replica. If we expand our way through the model and click on one of our reactors, you can see the main content area populate with the first of the two graphics we configured for the reactor. Now, before I leave our navigation panel, I want to point out one other thing. Notice the yellow indicators on some of the items? Well, these appear because of the setting we left enabled that said show alarms. Okay, returning to the reactor and the graphics shown in the main display, you may recall we actually had two graphics associated with each reactor, pretty graphics and situational awareness ones. Well, we can cycle through the graphics using the tabs on the left and right side of the main panel, and this is made possible because of the panel's property show navigation buttons, and you may recall we enabled the multiple setting. There is another option here that I want to point out. It's called Enable Hierarchical Navigation. And this provides us with the ability to move from this object to other objects in the same area very quickly and easily. So we can move from this reactor to any other one without even having to use the navigation panel. Finally, remember we created what I called the cool slide-in alarm panel? 
This is available at any time, no matter which part you're looking at, by clicking on the tab at the bottom and it makes it slide in and show us our alarms. Okay, we're just basically out of time, so I need to wrap this up. So what have we done to create our first InTouch OMI application? Well, we can use an existing Galaxy or we can create a new Galaxy and do all the things we used to do, but to get the InTouch OMI, First we create a screen profile, next we create a layout, then we combine those into what's called a view app and deploy and enjoy, right? Well, hopefully this has provided you with a simple example of how to create InTouch All My Applications. And as you probably realize, this is only the tip of the iceberg. InTouch All My contains dozens and dozens of capabilities, options, and features we haven't even talked about yet. And of course, we're happy to help you dive in more deeply and uh, help you get to know InTouch All My better. If you have any questions or you'd like to talk with someone further, please don't hesitate to contact us at www.atrdistributing.com or call us at 1-800-421-5253.